Hey everybody, JJ here. Welcome back for another Wednesday edition of Zoom Networking. Today, we have none other than my good friend Alvin Sun coming to speak to us about one of the really, really common topics today, which are Airbnbs. Uh, Alvin is an investor. He's a business person, an entrepreneur, successful investor, and has has really started to uh, do some pretty cool things with Airbnb. Uh, with no further ado, I'm going to bring him on. Alvin, how are you doing today, brother? JJ, I'm doing awesome. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm really excited. Oh, yeah, I'm excited too. You know, uh, I went to an Airbnb event, gosh, a few weeks ago, and all I'm hearing these days is Airbnb, so I'm, I'm pretty excited. Um, but really quickly, can you sort of tell everybody a little bit about what you're going to be talking about today? Just a little synopsis up front. Sure. So um, the topic for today would be uh, a little niche in the Airbnb world called Airbnb arbitrage. And we'll dig into a little bit deeper on how that can allow you to really scale um, the business uh, really quickly and allow you to get into the business uh, um, sooner than you may think. Um, without having to save up a a down payment, purchase a property, and start with uh, Airbnb in that fashion. Uh, Airbnb arbitrage allows you to uh, get into the business in the real estate world with uh, some cash in your pocket and a credit card. So we're going to be exploring that a little bit today. Wow, that sounds really cool. Um, So with no further ado, my brother, take it away, my friend. Hey guys, uh, my name is Alvin Sun. I'm really excited to be. Thank you, JJ, for inviting me to present to, uh, in your group today. Um, I've been a real estate investor since uh, 2016 and a full time real estate investor since uh, 2018. Um, I got my start doing wholesales and flips in the San Francisco Bay Area market. And then when I started doing the business full time, I had a bit more time and freedom to travel. Um, I brought my experience and my profits out to the Midwest, spent some time out there doing flips um, and JVs and owning some investment property out in the Midwest. Um, You know, doing flips in a market like San Francisco, profit checks maybe have that extra zero on it, but your mistakes also have a few extra zeros on that as well. So, you know, being a full-time investor, there's no real safety net. Um, So I made the decision to step away from the high stakes table and did more of a volume business, uh, specifically out in Indiana and Ohio. Um, I am also a private money lender and a hard money broker. Uh, Coming from uh, financial services in my corporate life, I found I really enjoyed helping people understand and find different financial services for their deals. And uh, when the pandemic hit in 2020, as with everyone else, sort of hit a stag in the business. You know, capital markets were shut down, loans weren't closing, and I was just getting started investing in Airbnb during this time. Uh, Airbnb during the pandemic, you know, hospitality, vacation rentals, shut down, all bad, doom and gloom. Um, however, after the first few months, uh, we actually found that the Airbnb started ticking off like crazy. Uh, it turns out even during a global shutdown, people still needed and wanted to travel. And they honestly, they preferred the homey setting of an Airbnb home as opposed to a stuffy elevator or a hotel lobby. So decided to buck down, try to figure out how to scale and really improve the Airbnb business. And as I mentioned before, the method that we used was a technique called rental ar- uh, sorry, Airbnb arbitrage. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about. So first and foremost, what is Airbnb arbitrage? Or rather, let's take a step back even further. And what is arbitrage? Sounds like a fancy term that the financial types like to throw out there to make everything sound all obscure and confusing. Um, But in in its most basic definition, arbitrage is taking the difference between two different um, markets and making a profit on the difference. You see that in many many examples in life Um, with your bank. You know, you put a deposit of $10,000, you're making 0.000003% interest on that money. And the bank is taking that money and giving it as a mortgage or an auto loan and charging the customer three to 6%. That is arbitrage. Foreign exchange currency traders, they see that the Canadian dollar is strong against the Euro. 
you know, they're going to take advantage of the strength and weakness between those two currencies and make a profit there. Retail, we see a lot of people who are buying products from local stores or overseas and selling them on Amazon for profit. That's a very uh, uh, popular business these days with um, a lot of access to, every, access to everyone through the internet. And even flipping, I know this, you know, um, a lot of you who are getting in the real estate game are starting with the flipping and the wholesaling. That is a form of arbitrage as well. You're taking a product, you're taking a distressed home, you're putting in a little bit of work onto it, and you're, uh, you have a finished product of uh, uh, a newly renovated modern home ready for a new family. So that's arbitrage. So Airbnb arbitrage. What is the benefit is that as opposed to um, buying a property and uh, starting from there? Um, as a property owner myself, um, I, there's definitely pros and cons on both aspects. However, I find that with Airbnb done properly, uh, arbitrage is the way to go and for immediate and massive cash flow. So we'll talk a little bit about the intricacies on that in a little bit. But basically, Airbnb is taking arbitrage is taking a property that is owned by another landlord and uh, signing a corporate lease, you know, in full disclosure, explaining the business model and uh, pocketing the difference between your Airbnb uh, profits and the market rent that these landlords are charging. So in order to make profit on this model, you're going to need to find property that can generate an Airbnb revenue of three to five times the market rent uh, relative to long-term rentals. And that long-term, that rent, what you're paying your landlord is part of your monthly expenses. And the criteria that we use, we while Airbnb is very versatile, you know, you can uh, set up an RV in your backyard or you can Airbnb a spare bedroom in your room. Um, however, with Airbnb arbitrage to me, we have a very specific criteria of the property that we're looking for. We have to find property that is making at least $2,000 of net profit per month, even on a slow season, and can capture about 50 to 70% occupancy on a slow month and 75 to 90% occupancy on peak season. Uh, another criteria there is you want to find places that are friendly towards uh, short-term rentals. And that's also a benefit with the arbitrage model. And this is something that we've had to learn the hard way. Um, and, you know, if you're in California, say the Los Angeles market, you finally saved up a quarter million, 300,000 to put a down payment on a home. And then you're going to build, invest additional money to furnish the property and make it an Airbnb. Then all of a sudden, you know, city ordinances or county ordinances or even the HOA um, of the home has the ability to shut you down. The benefit of rental arbitrage with Airbnb arbitrage is at any point, if that happens to a property of yours, you can simply shut, close up shop at that location bring all the furniture, all the money that you invested in the furnishings and bring it to another location that is more conducive to the business model. So that's one of the benefits here. And most importantly, there's no rehab or evictions necessary. Um, you, we are in a situation where we can pick and choose the properties that we choose to work with. Um, and our criteria, we generally want to find nicer, modern home, maybe even just recently rehabbed, uh, by the property owner to run the business. That's what's going to really appeal to our customer base, the people who are vacationing and staying at these Airbnbs. And um, there's no issues with payment, no having to chase tenants for late payment or non-payment and having to evict them. That's a whole pain. That's a whole uh, mess in itself. Uh, with Airbnb, obviously, you know, they swipe the credit card, they make the payment, you get paid the day they check in or the day after they check in. So, that is uh, sort of some of the pros with this model. So show us the money. What are we talking about here? So what is great about the Airbnb arbitrage model is that it's easy to scale and there's a really low barrier to entry. Um, for your first property, all you really need is ten dollars to $20,000. What does that $20,000 look like? Let's break it down real quick. That's your first month's rent 
security deposit and your furnishings. Um, out here where I'm at um, in Nevada, uh, or even I have some property in California, your average rent is somewhere around $3,000 for a four bedroom house. Um, so you're looking at 3,000 for rent, first month's rent, 3,000 for security deposit, and about 10 to $15,000 in furnishings. Each unit of these, each Airbnb that we add to our portfolio is bringing in a monthly net profit, $2,000. That means after rent, after cleaning, after utilities, after your miscellaneous costs, you're still pocketing close to $2,000, if not more, on a monthly basis. If the property does not perform as such, then it may be um, worthwhile to shut down the property after your lease ends, you know, live and learn. Um, so that's one there. So, and this is sort of the sweet spot to really get the tread, uh, momentum uh, you'd want to really get beginning. So starting with an $80,000 investment using this uh, projection of $20,000 per unit, that's four units, uh, four Airbnb units uh, through Airbnb arbitrage. And that should bring you an extra $8,000 monthly net profit in your pocket. And um, going into, uh, what's it called? And that's pretty good by itself right there. Uh, on an annual basis, that's $96,000 extra to your annual income. How many of people would like that as a raise <laughs> in a, for uh, a few months work? So using this model, however, if you're not just taking that profits and you're reinvesting into the business, um, in every two months, you're clearing about $16,000 of net profit, roll that into the business, get another um, Airbnb. Uh, so every two months, within a year, you'll be at 10 units, which is bringing in close to $20,000 a month net. So you may be thinking $80,000, that's not chump change. That's, a, <laughs> that's quite a bit. Um, that furnishing there, put it on a credit card. So to really get started with the four model, four units to get started, you're looking at, let's say $6,000 per unit times four, that's $24,000 cash. And if you have a credit card that's able to, I mean, many credit cards these days offering a, a promotion of your first 12 or 18 months, 0% APR. Um, I know many of you who have invested in programs such as Fortune Builder, uh, Subject 2, and many other real estate educations have, uh, are familiar with this. Um, so you've invested in the education, and now it's time to invest in the, your actual assets, building out your portfolio with these credit cards. Um, there's very few real estate investments that I can think of that leverage credit cards this heavily, which is what is... If you have great credit, if you have a great credit limit, um, the sky's the limit with this model. So continued. Let's break that down a little bit. How does that look like? So conservative top line, we want to find properties that will make about $2,000 profit. And to do that, the market, the Airbnb revenue earning potential has to be about at least two times the market rent. Um, ideally, you're finding something a bit more than that. But let's say conservatively, you're having a bad month and you are clear only $6,000 uh, with your Airbnb business. Rent is due on the first, as it is with all your other properties. And the, <laughs> um, so, you know, rent is due $3,000. That's half of that all gone. Cleaning on average for a four bedroom, two bath uh, will be run about. 100 to 200 dollars let's assume uh cleaning is about thousand dollars a month utilities resupplies new toilet paper all that 500 bucks you're walking away about 1500 dollars net profit for this property let's say we have a slow year like uh, um and this is the best that we can do 1500 dollars times 12 month is eighteen thousand dollars $18,000 on a $20,000 investment is about a 90% cash on cash return. Let's put that in contrast to a property that I own out in uh, Indiana. Um, it's a $100,000 property. I put a $20,000 down payment with a 5% mortgage and it clears about $1,000 uh, gross rent. Your rent's looking at about $1,000. Your mortgage, principal and interest, 450. 
insurance, 110, taxes, 100 bucks a month. You're looking at clearing about $340 on a monthly basis. Times that by 12, you're looking at a 20% cash on cash return, which is amazing, which is still great. You know, I'm never going to sell that property. However, in terms of uh, just raw cash flow, in terms of scalability and just cash in the pocket to be able to grow your investments, we can definitely see there's a bit of a difference in those two figures. So when we saw there on the numbers earlier, we're looking at an operating expense ratio of about 75%, meaning that whatever money I'm taking in through Airbnb, 25% um, of that is actual money, actual profit that's coming in. I was running on two different accounts. These are Airbnb statements. They now provide these these days to Airbnb investors um, as proof of income to be able to get a mortgage uh, from a bank. So I pulled them from the two accounts that we operate here. And in 2021, one of the accounts generated 131, 134. And on the other account for the month year of 2021, we're generating about 123. So if we're looking at, that's about a quarter million and a 25%, a 75% expense ratio, 25% profit, that is an annual raise of 62,500. So the secret sauce, if everyone, if it, was, if it seems so easy, why doesn't everyone do this? Why isn't everyone having a spectacular success with their Airbnb? Well, the answer to that is it's not all that easy. Um, there is, as with any business, there's, uh, I wouldn't say right or wrong way, but there's an optimized way to go about to optimize business. And we think having done, been in the business for the past two, two and a half years now, um, we haven't figured out the, 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 the perfect answer, there is no perfect answer, but we get, we've got some good stuff going with secret sauce here. Location is key. As with anything in real estate, um, you got to find the right location. You need to find these places where people are uh, trafficking, where people are coming in um, and visiting. Uh, the, you want to find the right part of town. It's a different kind of location than, say, a real term, uh, long term rental. You know, if you take your uh, landlord hat into the Airbnb business, it might get you into a bit of trouble. School districts, amenities such as that is not as important as uh, proximity to attractions, to local hospitals. Um, and that's another thing, too. Um, some of our best customers are people who are coming in and staying at these properties for months at a time. We have uh, construction crews, film crews, traveling nurses, um, people traveling for business that they'd rather stay at a, a Airbnb as opposed to book out three or four hotel rooms uh, for their team. Um, sale it, solid sales pitch and value proposition, talking to people, sales technique. Um, Many people have tried with Airbnb, uh, with arbitrage, and their biggest challenge is I can't get anyone, I can't convince anyone to, to agree to lease it to me. They, they, they hear the words Airbnb and they, they hang up the phone. Um, and it's just a matter of crafting a good value proposition. Why should a landlord work with you as opposed to a standard tenant? Well, there's many benefits in there. One, you have a vested interest in maintaining and keeping the property clean. You know, you can't say that for any tenant that you bring into your property. Um, and you may, you may get lucky with a lucky tenant. However, as a business coming in to lease out these properties, we have a vested interest in maintaining these properties. You know, we'd be uh, many times when there's larger repairs, uh, that's largely on the landlord, however, um, there's many instances where we've split um, the cost of repairing a fence, you know, plumbing, HVAC, all these big ticket items that are usually just strictly on the landlord. Um, in some instances, we've been able to negotiate a deal and that's well appreciated to, by these landlords. And uh, we have a client, we have a landlord who tried out our model. We had one property back in July of last year. And he called us up uh, last month saying, hey, I just bought another property. 
I want you to take the first stab at it. You know, I like, I enjoy the relationship that we've had with the first property. And my, uh, my partner and I are looking to buy three more properties this year. And we want to, if, you know, if you guys are open to it, we'd love for you to lease it out on Airbnb, run your model in our homes. So, and that ties into the power of networking and power of building those relationships. Visibility. So all that sounds great and all, but if your Airbnb listing is on the third or fourth or even the second page, you're not going to get as much business as the listings that are on the first page. And that's the same. That's true of any business. Um, it, you know, if you have an online business or service, if you don't have your search engine optimization set up and you're on the first page of Google, you're going to be losing out business to whoever has set up their optimization to be on the first page of Google. And so pricing and visibility is key. And there's some ticks tips and tricks of messing with the Airbnb algorithm to make sure that your properties are constantly on the front page. Automation and scale. So one of the challenges many people is starting with Airbnb is I, <laughs> I'm having people message me in the midnight, so, you know, having people message me while I'm at work or on the road. And there's no way that I can, uh, provide this and you know that may have a suffered uh, customer experience so how do we do, how do we solve for that well there is software that is it enables us to synchronize our calendars over multiple accounts um, create automated messaging so I don't have to copy paste or type out this is your login code this is the Wi-Fi password to every guest that comes in all of that is completely automated and hands off. Um, I have a property that I haven't been to in, I think it's almost seven months now, which um, <laughs> it's long overdue. I should definitely head down there, take a look, make sure that there's nothing um, broken. But that's, that's the thing, having a good system in place where you can basically turn this business into a passive income. Um, I have a virtual assistant that handles a lot of the procurement, the supplies, the resupplies needed. Um, the cleaners go in, they, they, have their, they know our process. They go in, they take pictures of before they do their cleaning and after they do their cleaning. And they will be letting uh, my virtual assistant know through Slack, through a, a team communication system, hey, we're out of toilet paper. Hey, we're out of soap. We need all this stuff. And my virtual assistant goes onto my Amazon account and ships that over to the cleaner down in Southern California while I'm up in Northern California or I'm traveling in Miami. Um, all this allows you to sort of build and scale it up without having to worry about, oh shoot, how do I manage the toilet paper in my Airbnb? Like the, the, it sounds ridiculous, but it's these small things, these small fears that prohibit people from getting into these kind of businesses, getting into the Airbnb business, just these small fears. And the way to overcome these fears is systems, building out systems, building out processes to allow you to focus on the most important part of your business, which is continuing to grow and develop the business as opposed to working in the business. Alvin, cool. Um, I saw a lot of people taking notes. Uh, dropping some good, some good gold nuggets here. Some new, some new stuff. I particularly found the uh, credit card uh, point to be very, very interesting. And um, thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Um, if you're watching the video now on YouTube, please like the video below. Click that you like the video, and if you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're going to have uh, speakers coming up every week, and we'll be adding more and more content as weeks go by. So please subscribe, and you'll see uh, more of Alvin and our friends and other people that are sharing great, great stuff. Uh, in the meantime, if you're on the call, hang on. We're going to do the breakout rooms, do some networking. And uh, everybody else, see, see you next week. Over and out. <laughs>